So you're all ready to enter the worlds of adventure offered by D&D. You may have something like this, or you may have something like this, or maybe you're making it up all on your own. In any case, you've got a group of friends that are ready to set off on an adventure with you, and then it hits you. Oh crap, I have to run this all on my own. Being a DM can be a tough job, but it's a rewarding one. Like any other craft, say painting or drawing, all it takes to get better at it is practice. You just have to jump in and start doing it. Your first attempts out aren't going to be masterpieces, but that's okay. If you're the first time DM that I think you might be, then this video is for you. I want to give you a few tips and tricks that I've picked up along the way that will hopefully get you set off on the right foot on your first outing. D&D is a cooperative game, not just amongst the players, but including you as the dungeon master. Your job is to provide the players with situations that are compelling and engaging and fun, all without steamrolling them and killing them outright. That's your challenge as a dungeon master, creating these compelling encounters that are balanced, that will challenge the characters, but allow them to be the heroes that the players are pretending to be. At no point during the game should you be asking yourself, how best can I kill my player characters? There's a couple of reasons for this. The first is, it's easy for you to do. You can do it at any point. In your game world, you're basically God. You could open up a portal, have Orcus pop out, and slaughter all of the players. It's not fun for you, and it's probably not fun for the players, but you can do it. And that's the second reason. Killing the players is not fun for the players, unless of course you're running a meat grinder scenario, but that's a completely separate thing. It's a lot more fun to work together and create a compelling story than it is to just slaughter everybody. D&D has a lot of books, and I mean a lot, especially if you're gathering up all of the editions. But just in 5th edition, there's still quite a few books. There's only really three, however, that matter for you as a Dungeon Master. That's the Player's Handbook, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Monster Manual. Now, these books give you everything you need to run the game. They tell you the rules and all of the classes and whatnot. That being said, you can ignore them all. You can change anything in the books. You can modify any of the rules. It is well within your right to do that. The game that you're running belongs to you and you alone. So you are free to change the rules to meet your needs. Now, the action of changing these rules is called homebrewing. Homebrew rules and homebrew items and homebrew classes are extremely common throughout the gaming community. You go to any forum and people are talking about homebrew stuff. If you do decide to change up rules and classes and whatnot from the source rulebooks, make sure that you discuss this with your players before you actually start playing. Now, the player's handbook typically gives you and your players a common set of expectations in terms of how the game works. If you're going to subvert those expectations, it's best to make sure that everybody's on the same page before you get started. That way there's no surprises and nobody gets mad because things don't work the way they thought they did. Along these same lines, if you're running a published adventure, the content of that adventure is just a guideline for the encounters and the narrative that your players might encounter. You're free to change any of this to suit your players' backgrounds, your gaming table, your tastes, whatever you want. It's entirely up to you and the game world is yours. Change it as you see fit. The book is not law. No one's perfect. Not me, not you, not even the creator of D&D himself, Gary Gygax. Chances are, if you're like most people, you're not a walking encyclopedia. You don't have the entire player's handbook memorized. You, you don't know what is in basic item table C. I don't even know if that's a real table. But in any case, you get my point. You don't have to memorize everything. You're not going to, chances are. And because of that, you might forget a few things. You might not know exactly what skill check to use in a particular situation, and that's fine. 
that doesn't make you a bad DM, that just makes you human. When you find yourself in these situations, feel free to pause the game. Maybe look up the official rule or just make a gut ruling and check back on the official rule later. When you do figure out what the real ruling is, go back to your players and say, hey, I made a mistake, here's what we're going to do from now on. Chances are they're going to be okay with it. And if they're not, then that's a completely separate issue that we're going to talk about in just a second. Now, in addition to remembering rules and whatnot, don't feel like you have to be perfect in your performance as a DM. I think there's a lot of pressure on DMs these days to be very theatrical, especially with shows like Critical Role being so popular. Now, just because you don't perform as well as Matt Mercer, that doesn't mean you're not a good DM. Just because you don't craft adventures as well as Matt Colville, it doesn't mean your game's not awesome. Don't hold yourself up to these high-profile figures and compare yourself against them and measure your success that way. Use them as inspiration, certainly, absolutely, but they're not a barometer of success for you. Teddy Roosevelt once said that comparison is the thief of joy, and I think that really rings true here. The only thing you're going to achieve by comparing yourself to these other folks is you're going to enjoy the game a lot less, so don't do it. And don't let your players do it either. I've seen a lot of forum posts where players are like, oh, I'd like this game to be a lot more like Critical Role. Don't let them do that. If they do, then you've got a problem with your players. Problems with players do crop up. It's unfortunate, but true. Now, I think they're a lot more common when you're playing with groups of strangers rather than your inner circle of friends, but even then, it's possible. I see a lot of threads on Reddit where new DMs are saying that they've got an issue with a player and they ask for advice. Inevitably, the advice is always the same. Talk to the person outside of the game like an adult and work through the problem. And avoid, at all costs, any in-game sort of punishments. This is a really easy bit of advice to give, and it's probably the hardest to follow, especially if you've got any sort of social anxiety or any aversion to conflict whatsoever. I unfortunately don't have any advice to make this easier, but I can tell you that problems with players aren't going to go away if you don't talk about them. That's the only way that you're going to resolve them, and any attempts to resolve it in-game by either DM fiat or punishments or whatnot are only going to make the problems worse. So go ahead and just take a deep breath, move forward, and talk. A lot of issues with players can be avoided entirely by setting up proper expectations. This can be done during a session zero. Session zero is when you and your players get together and you discuss your upcoming game. You can generate characters together, talk about their backstories, their relations to one another, and also decide what kind of game you want to play. Is it dark and gritty? Fun and lighthearted? Is PvP allowed? Are there any sort of themes and situations that should be avoided? That last question is an important one. Each group is made up of people with diverse backgrounds, and some of those backgrounds are unfortunately traumatic. This sort of trauma can color the way a person perceives a game and the events within that game. Now, as you're talking about the content of your game, or at least the potential content, it's your job as the DM to make sure that everybody is comfortable with the situations that may arise. If somebody is going to be uncomfortable with, for example, the themes of child abuse that are prevalent in Curse of Strahd, then it's your job to work your way around that and figure out something else that is more palatable to the group. This makes sure that the game is fun for everybody and nobody is left out, and nobody has their past trauma coming back to haunt them in the middle of the game. This sort of adjustment may require some improvisation on your part, but it'll be appreciated by your players, I assure you. Thankfully, improvisation is part and parcel with the job of being a DM. You never know what your players are going to do, and they'll surprise you every time. I love improvising my way through a brand new situation that I wouldn't have thought of otherwise. It's what keeps the game fun and refreshing, at least in my opinion. This is something that every DM has to have 
as a skill, at least on some level. You don't have to be amazing at it, like, you know, whose line is it anyway level of improv, but you've at least got to be able to do it at a rudimentary level. Whether it's coming up with a new NPC or a shop or a few lines of dialogue, it's something that you have to be ready to do. That being said, improv has its limits. Now, if your players are going to go into an area where you have absolutely nothing prepared, feel free to put the brakes on the game and say, hey guys, I don't, I need five or ten minutes. Can you guys just hold up? Or maybe even say, you know what, I don't know what's beyond those mountains. Can we kind of steer the game in this direction a little bit? Hopefully your players are going to be okay with that. Now, you can try to improv your way through Neverwinter and Waterdeep without any prep whatsoever, but I don't recommend it. That being said, don't ever try to force your players to go in one direction or another. This is called railroading, and nobody likes it. The game is all about freedom and player agency. Give them a world and see how it reacts to their actions. In order to avoid railroading your players, it helps to understand the difference between story and narrative. Now, a story is the actions of characters all put together in sequence. This is what we're used to reading when we pick up a book. A narrative, on the other hand, is the overarching skeleton that the events are set in. Two different groups of players can be given the same narrative, but come out the other side with wildly different stories. If you meticulously plot out a story for your players beat by beat with a beginning, a middle, and an end, the only thing that you are going to end up with is an unfinished story and a table full of frustrated individuals, yourself included. Instead of doing this, think of the narrative that your players are going to go into. Take a look at your antagonist and their goals. What are they going to do to achieve those goals? Once you have the antagonist's plans and goals firmly set in your mind, you can start a narrative loop that is going to carry you through your entire game. Step 1. How does your antagonist plan to achieve their current goal? Step 2. What happens if the players don't do anything to thwart that goal? Their plans move forward and how does that affect the world? Step 3. Kind of in conjunction with step 2. If your players do thwart the antagonist's plans, how does the antagonist react and how do their plans change? Step 4. Rinse and repeat until the antagonist is defeated. Out of that narrative loop comes an organic story that is driven by your players' actions. A story that's all their own and no one else's.